Hey everybody and welcome back to Inside Gaming. After Nintendo launched the Switch, there was one big question on everyone's minds. When will they launch a new virtual console? Well, it seems like the answer may actually be never based on a recent rumor going around, but that doesn't mean you won't be able to play your favorite classics on the Switch. Nope, as we talked about earlier this week, it seems like those older titles will begin getting brand new HD ports sometime this year, and it will all start with Mario. Because of course it's going to start with Mario. But yes, to coincide with the Red Clouded Plumber's 35th anniversary, Nintendo is planning to go big on Mario releases this year. According to those rumors, their E3 Nintendo Direct was planned to be packed with Mario news. Complete with information on the Super Nintendo World theme park, the Super Mario Bros. movie from Illumination Entertainment, remasters of Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, Super Mario Galaxy, and a brand new Paper Mario. And while that's all really cool, it does essentially mean that any hopes of a virtual console on the Switch are pretty much dead. So I hope you like those whenever Nintendo wants type updates to the NES and SNES apps, because this may mean they're going to get a lot more infrequent, and that we'll probably never see a similar app release for the N64 or GameCube. Okay, but why? Why would Nintendo focus on remasters and remakes and HD ports of all of these games after the consistent outcry from fans to just release the classics as is on a virtual console? What does this mean for games that aren't considered Nintendo classics or even worth remastering? And will Nintendo just completely abandon those NES and SNES apps in the future in favor of remastering and remaking even older classics? Well, it's time to board the speculation train as we try and answer all of these questions and more. Despite taking a while, the Wii U's eShop eventually had a veritable wealth of games from multiple eras and the prices weren't too bad. $5 for an NES game, $8 to $10 for an SNES game or a Nintendo DS game, $10 for an N64 game, $7 to $8 for a GBA game, and $20 for a Wii game. All in all, not too bad and not too pricey for a bunch of games that spanned decades. And that's not even including the fact that there were other consoles that were included in the virtual console for the Wii U as well. And yes, of course I still have my Wii U because the virtual console on there is so good. But since then, Nintendo has shifted gears and gone all in on taking games that originally sold poorly and then porting them to the Switch. And the reason most of those games didn't sell well was probably because the Wii U just failed to take off after launch. Which is why we now have Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Pokémon Tournament DX, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, Complete with Funky Mode, Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, Bayonetta 2, and a plethora of other remasters and ports being released in rapid succession for the Switch. And of course, the cost to purchase all of these games? The exact same price they were on the Wii U. Full retail, baby! So with this rumored 3D Mario compilation pack, which would be along the lines of a Super Mario All-Stars 2 if rumors are to be believed, you're guaranteed to be paying about 60 bucks. Originally, it was reported that this Super Mario All-Stars 2 of sorts would contain Super Mario 64, Sunshine, Galaxy, and Galaxy 2. And with some simple math, if you purchased all of those on the Wii U eShop, that would come out to about $50 because Sunshine was never available on the platform. Sorry, GameCube games, you just never made it. But with a little speculation, we could guesstimate that you'd probably be paying around $15 to $20 for a GameCube game on the eShop. So that would slide that price right up to about $65 to $70. More likely $70 because it is a Mario game. So wait, that means that Nintendo is going to be charging less than they would have gotten with eShop releases. Are they actually passing along the savings to the customers? Well, yeah, but there's a benefit to this for Nintendo as well. Selling a combo pack like this is seen as a huge value for players, and with the fact that near-direct ports of Wii U games are selling far better on Switch, why wouldn't they take advantage of it? Every single Wii U game we listed earlier has either sold more than or has been better reviewed than its Wii U counterpart. So you know Nintendo's gonna start double dipping as often as possible. Back onto that combo pack thing, everyone is tempted by those bundles. After all, even if you don't like every game included, the fact that you get more has you see it as a better value. So if, but more likely when, this is a success, they can repeat this in infinite with all of their other franchises. Of course, Nintendo is also apparently planning to re-release Super Mario 3D World as a deluxe version, which would end up costing about $60 as well. 
So any of the newer games will more than likely be sold as a deluxe version, like Mario Kart 8, and the older ones would get bundles. This is a little speculation on our part, but translating this to the Zelda franchise would mean that we'd get Ocarina of Time, Master Quest, and Majora's Mask as a bundle for about 60 bucks. But Twilight Princess HD, Wind Waker HD, and possibly Skyward Sword would get a deluxe type release for $60 each. And all of this adds up in the end, resulting in big profits for Nintendo with less effort than it takes to make a brand new game. And of course, cool, we get some slightly updated versions of classics, some deluxe versions, and everybody's happy. Right? Well, sort of. It's great for all the Pinnacle series Nintendo has, but it's not so great for literally everything else or franchises Nintendo has all but abandoned. Mario, Zelda, Kirby, and Fire Emblem all have their chances to get this type of treatment in the future. I mean, heck, they did it with Xenoblade. But games like F-Zero, Golden Sun, Chibi-Robo, Earthbound, Kid Icarus, Advance Wars, Star Fox, the ones that have either been shunned or forgotten have a far less chance of seeing these bundles or deluxe editions. And this is all really bad for video game preservation and video game history, because that means it's entirely up to the publishers of any and all third-party games if they're going to be mimicking this style of video game preservation that Nintendo is doing. Capcom has actually been a big proponent of this, but for smaller companies or series lost to time, they're likely to continue to fade into obscurity until they are ultimately forgotten entirely. Which again, really sucks for video game preservation as a whole. Those cartridges and discs can't last forever, and that's why video game preservation is such a hot issue. Not to mention all of these updated versions aren't likely to be exactly as they were when they were released, meaning it's not precisely preservation, though it is still something. So again, sorry 1080 Snowboarding, The Last Story, Pandora's Tower, Sin and Punishment, Custom Robo, Wave Race, Star Tropics, we'll miss you. And here's where things could potentially get even worse and make that Nintendo Online service even less valuable than it already is. If, and again, when these compilation packs and deluxe versions sell well, Nintendo may turn its eyes towards the DS and 3DS and even older versions of games, those NES, SNES, GBA, Game Boy classics, and attempt to do the exact same thing with them. So this is great for popular series, but it's a big hit to video game preservation as a whole. And by forcing this back onto the publishers of certain games and certain series, it means that not every single game or company is going to be financially viable enough to actually re-release these things on any kind of compilation or deluxe edition. Not everybody can be Mario, so be sure to hold on to your classics while you still can, because who knows what's going to happen to them. And while we're here, let's take a quick moment to discuss that new Paper Mario game, because while the series has had a lot of love surrounding the first two entries, everything after has been met with a lukewarm response. As much as we all love to talk about how amazing Paper Mario and Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door are, Super Paper Mario and, ugh, Sticker Star outsold both of them, and Nintendo probably blames the Wii U itself for the reason that Color Splash didn't sell well. So they're probably going to stick to that more experimental formula for the series rather than going back to what we all really want. And you know, of course, they're going to end up making a compilation and deluxe edition of all of these games as well. But ultimately, this is a double-edged sword for gamers. Sure, we're going to get a lot of big-name classics re-released, and having that in our hands is always a good thing. But it's important to remember that all of those other games, the ones that just did okay but we still really loved, they're more likely going to be left behind and forgotten. And it's funny that Nintendo is doing this. Meanwhile, Xbox is actively trying to keep its back catalog of games alive and well with backwards compatibility. And most of those games are just the way we remembered them back in the day. And if you'd like to learn a little bit more about the importance of video game preservation, check out GameHistory.org. They have all of the information you could possibly want to know about video game preservation and why it's so important. And it's not just the video games themselves that the Video Game History Foundation are trying to keep alive and well. They are attempting to keep all aspects of the short but impactful history of video games alive. They are scanning in game boxes, instruction manuals, promotional materials, and advertisements, finding and digitizing the highest quality trailers and sales videos, compiling clean and untainted original code, and keeping an active catalog of everything that revolves around gaming and gaming culture. The Video Game History Foundation even lends out these materials and information to museums and other organizations to help further educate everyone on gaming history as they advocate for active preservation before too much is lost. 
But we'd love to hear your thoughts on Nintendo's further shift away from the virtual console and doubling down on remasters. Does it get you hyped or disappointed? Leave your thoughts in the comments. And thanks for watching Inside Gaming. Oh uh, yeah, this year marks the 35th anniversary of the Super Mario series, which was back before most of us were born. Except yeah. for Brian. He was somehow still 40 even back then. He's like Benjamin Button, but hot at every age. Benjamin Button was one sexy baby. <laughs> Sorry, I had a f***ing stroke. Baby. But yeah, this is a big anniversary for Mario. Now he's officially old enough to run for president.